Hello, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly reading for August 12th through the 18th. This is for Taurus and Taurus Rising and Taurus Moon. And we're going to jump right into it, Taurus. This is the week where, uh, yeah, you're going to start feeling that squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Uh, maybe that's a new word I'm going to make up. Uh, but I talked about this in your uh, monthly forecast we actually kick it off on Wednesday, August 14th, before we get to that squeeze uh, with Mars conjuncting Jupiter. This is absolutely amazing. Best aspect of the week. You could see the green asterisk next to it, as well as another one coming up. We'll talk about that in a minute. But Mars and Jupiter, oh my goodness, in Gemini with this powerful conjunction in your second house of money, finances, income. There could have been some big money things that have been brewing since maybe even July 20th when Mars moved into Gemini joining Jupiter but now they're conjuncted now this is powerful now this is a big meetup this is a uh, this is you in your power this is you in the zone this is a 12 out of 10 this is going to be really really nice and just so you know by the way well as we know Mars is power action it's that drive Jupiter, good fortune, good luck, uh, expansion. So there definitely is going to be a lot of growth here. But just so you know, Mars conjuncting Jupiter and Gemini has not happened in 35 years. We're talking 1989, not the 80s. This is big. So I, I was a kid around that time. But if, if you remember what happened for you around that time, something you could see uh, a lot of, uh, you know, the same kind of uh, energy around this time around as well. But this is, again, in your second house. So even if you're not here for money, if you are... Uh, Robert Pattinson, uh, right? The uh, Taurus, just like you, uh, where you've got enough of that. And you're just like, Jimmy, I got enough money. I'm sitting on gold bars as I speak. Tell me something else. Tell me something else. Well, the second house is self-worth. It's self-value. It's also material possessions. There could be things coming into your life. There could be things that are happening in your life that's bringing this huge boost of confidence. I absolutely love this. This is really you coming into your power. This is uh, a lot of drive, a lot of courage with this uh, uh, type of aspect that's happening. Success will be a big theme around this time with Mars and Jupiter being in Gemini. This is you uh, walking the walk and talking the talk. This is definitely going to be a lot of energy too. This is really amped up energy. Almost, it could be a really wild aspect for you so really hard is this energy use it to your advantage it really is beginning this new cycle for you and looking at what's going on for y'all in general a lot of Tauruses you may be uh switching things up in career actually so uh it could even be like uh, a, a second income stream or there could be something there but just keep an eye on this aspect it's so great and use it to your advantage like I said now on the same day Mercury retrogrades and Leo as we know Mercury is retrograde all month, but now it's moving into Leo, moving out of Virgo. So you could be returning to pre like uh, creative projects from the past, maybe even creative pursuits that you were thinking up in the past. Maybe you got too busy, uh, things out of the way. And now you've got this time like, hey, I want to do this again. Uh, maybe even hobbies. We're talking about Leo here. So yes. Exes could be resurfacing. I said that in your monthly forecast. Circumstances, people from the past resurface around this time. Now, because it is in Leo, that is your fourth house. So even family members for you, even maybe parents, children, uh, realtors, even uh, significant others from the past. This is the fourth house. It's your domestic sector, foundations of your life. So just keep that in mind. Even something from the new moon, by the way, the moon, moon, the new moon that happened in Leo on August 4th, there could be something that you're returning to around that time. If you started something around that time, uh, just keep that in mind, right? There may be even a sense of you because people resurface. Like I said, people from your past resurface. It could be you getting in touch with people from your past as well. Now, the other thing is just remember with these retrogrades, uh, you could be settling into things, you could be reassessing things, reevaluating uh, re things in your life. It is a time where you're just maybe getting things done. Uh, the other thing is on Thursday, August 15th, this is when we've got Mars graying Saturn, okay? This is, as I said in your monthly forecast, 
big. This is big. You're going to feel it for the month. You're going to feel it for the rest of the month. Uh, it's going to be very interesting for y'all. Uh, there definitely is something here with friendships or groups you belong to where you could feel a little bit of a squeeze. Maybe there is something that's taking a little bit longer than you want. Mars and Saturn are the two malefic planets. They are being naughty okay so mars can bring a little bit of conflict but mars remember is in gemini very fiery right here in gemini and air sign so mars there's a part of you that just wants to accelerate i mean roadrunner style saturn limits and restricts so you could have all this momentum from mars and jupiter and gemini but saturn is saying well, hang on I want you to be disciplined. In fact, I'm going to chaperone you, okay? And Saturn walks slow. So there really could be uh, uh, a little bit of a tug of war in terms of you moving at this pace, but Saturn is is bringing that squeeze, asking you to slow down, to really just focus and he's bringing a lesson for you to learn that's what saturn is saturn is life lessons and um, and it is for you to grow and for you to become stronger in the end remember saturn is giving you a test around this time as long as you're in touch with your higher self you're gonna pass with flying colors all right saturn is also karma so uh, saturn rewards you now saturn is in pisces in your 11th house your friendships, uh, groups you belong to, your social network, communities that you belong to. So there really could be a restructuring here. Um, it's also the love of house art is your hopes and wishes and dreams. So there could be something here where you feel really confident with that Mars, Jupiter energy, and then boom, Mars, Saturn is saying, wait, 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 slow down. All right. So remember, just practice patience. And there is likely going to be some sort of restructuring with 11th house matters that I just mentioned, maybe even some pivoting. And you will definitely feel this a little bit more next week when we have jupiter square saturn as well all right and the full moon in aquarius so just keep that in mind you want to at this time because the full moon is happening right after this week it's happening on monday that's why i wrote monday here as well because all these aspects uh starting on sunday you're going to feel them with monday's aspects as well there's got to be some things illuminated things coming to the surface so just take this time to weed out anything that's not meaningful in your life, all right? And just know that there is going to be likely a slowdown because we've got four planets retrograde and now Saturn is offering this squeeze. Remember, Saturn is chrono, Saturn is time. Just as I said in your monthly forecast, practice patience around this time, all right? Slow and steady wins the race. And again, with it having to do with communities, groups you belong to, there really just could be something like maybe you... You know, uh, now you have the money to join Soho House or something, but they say, oh, the wait list is got to be three months. That could be it could be just something as simple as that, where you're just like, I really wanted to be a member. But you you remember, practice that patience, uh, practice that patience. You're going to be fun. All right. Uh, so now Sunday, whew, we get to August 18th and Sunday and Monday. All these aspects really are happening at the same time. They're clumped together. Mercury squaring Uranus, Venus opposing Saturn, Sun conjuncting Mercury, Venus squaring Saturn. Again, just mark this down. It could even, you could feel it as soon as Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But this is going to be a pivotal time. Mercury squaring Uranus. We had this. We had this on the full moon, July 21st. Remember, that full moon was conjuncting Pluto. There could have been things revealed, but Mercury squaring Uranus is surprising news. So this is a time where you could have that. You could have that moment where there's something surprising that's coming up around this time it can have to do with the foundations of your life like i said earlier domestic matters uh there could be something here uh especially of the past remember mercury is retrograde at this point so with mercury squaring uranus uranus is in your sign so i also want you to be mindful of this is a time where you may also you may say something unexpected. You may say something surprising to someone else. So just remember, 
I talked about this in my last live stream. Words are powerful. Words are powerful as above, so below. You just want to be the best reflection of yourself and always be your authentic self. Don't let anything get your goat around this time. In fact, Uranus is all about breakthrough. So use this aspect for your breakthrough, the breakthrough that you need, all right? The breakthrough that you are seeking. Now, should anything go a little sideways? Well, you've got the sun conjuncting Mercury now. So we have a Mercury. Kazemi. This is absolutely amazing because it's also happening in Leo. Uh, this is a refresh. Mercury Kazemi, uh, basically Mercury is in the heart of the sun. So that is a powerful alignment. It is all about this refresh, this clarity, your light bulb moment. There's going to be a light bulb moment. This is that aha aspect of the week. Now, remember Sun and Leo confidence there's this confidence leadership energy and it could even be this dramatic aha moment that is sun and leo but it brings this awareness that's really nice now you see venus is going to oppose saturn at this time this is your ruling planet that we're talking about now venus is in virgo okay Venus is in Virgo and it's fall in your fifth house of joy, pleasure, love, relationships, creativity is a big thing here. Venus is creativity as well. So there really is something here. Venus opposite Saturn where it could have an impact where you could feel a squeeze and commitments. Remember Saturn being Kronos. Saturn is all about long-term goals as well. And Saturn in, in Pisces is in your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. So there really could be something here uh in terms of feeling a delay or maybe even feeling that you have to uh maybe work a little harder with saturn's tests for something that you really want something that your heart desires okay there's also something here that could have to do with love and money but mostly creativity venus and virgo in your fifth house a lot of creative energy here uh so play by saturn's rules like i always say you know you're going to be rewarded uh you are definitely going to think about when you do get rewarded, okay? Remember Saturn being karma. Just be in touch with your higher self. Think about how good it will feel when you do get rewarded. Now, Venus squaring Jupiter, very interesting. This is an interesting aspect because now you've got the two benefic planets in a square. This is just a time to not be... Uh, excessive or extravagant or overindulgent or overspending, okay? Or overspending, Venus being your ruling planet. You like to spend money, Taurus says, y'all like to spend money. So this is a time, Venus is also a very social planet. So it's a great time to be social, but reading the room at the same time because of these other aspects, especially Mercury squaring Uranus in uh, your sign. But just keep that in mind and you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. But yes, definitely this is a week where everyone, by the way, is going to feel a squeeze. Everyone's going to feel it differently. And remember, you just want to work with these energies to your best ability, Taurus. So let's get started. Let's see what's going on for y'all. Taurus and Taurus rising and Taurus moon. If you want to read for any other placements in your chart, you are absolutely welcome to. So Taurus, woo, let's do it. Let's see what's going on for you. August 12th to the 18th. Now, Taurus. Uh, I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview, in my opinion. If we need to pull clarifiers, oh, you know that we will. You know I got you, Taurus. I hope you are having an amazing day. Uh, let's see what's going on for you. You're going to be fine. Uh, yeah, you're going to be absolutely fine. You're good. You're good. There's definitely going to be that squeeze. You, yeah. Uh -huh. But it seems like you're overthinking things. I think that's going to be part of it all right uh so that's what venus and virgo does by the way uh we tend to overanalyze uh it's that perfectionist energy but also venus and virgo can be very self-critical as well don't do that don't do that you're gonna be fine let's get started you got the four of swords so yes you've possibly been taking this time out 
to really have this is all about meditation this is aligning your chakras this is stillness of mind and so this is really great and when i say meditation yes a lot of y'all could be doing you know meditation rituals listening to uh meditation music but meditation comes in a lot of different forms you know i always give the example you know when i walk my dog that's very meditative for me we go by the east river uh that's meditation okay just tuning out so really connecting with nature but this is really great okay i love this for you you're moving into this week prepared prepared and a lot of y'all could be taking this time out thinking about partnerships and relationships as well and how they relate to your everyday activities especially because this card is attributed to libra the native ruler of partnerships and relationships now you got another swords card you got pages of swords in the heart of your spread this is exciting this is very nice. There could be some, you, you're enthusiastic. Your mind, remember, you got Mars and Jupiter in Gemini of the mind. Gemini rules the third house all up here. Boom, boom, boom. So this is really great because that's what the swords are as well. All right. It's the mental suit, communication, logic, processing, thinking, maybe even on the brink of something new there. Remember, you could have this uh, burst of creative creativity insight even ideas but there is a sense of you are just restless you are ready to go and remember i said that before in one of your past readings that's what mars and gemini is even with jupiter there too there's that restless energy and that mars conjuncting jupiter and gemini is strong all right it's affecting your uh your your confidence and you're just you're ready he's ready he's ready to go all right so uh really great here there is likely some a lot of conversations you might be happening this week but your mind just really 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 the wheels are turning the cogs are turning but it seems like there is something new that is brewing as well now you have the two of uh, cups in your challenge area. So remember what I said earlier with the Saturn squeeze. All right. That is your 11th house. So it could be with a friend because this card can be taken platonically. This is a card of two souls inhabiting one body. This is very, very, very nice. This is beautiful energy. It is, we call it in layman's terms, the true love card, the twin flame card, the soulmate card. There is a sense of bonding that's really nice, but it's in your challenge area. So again, not seeing eye to eye with someone, friendship is coming up energetically for me really strong. There is also, yes, with the fact that you've got uh, Mercury retrograde in Leo in your fourth house, it could be something with a significant other as well, where there's just something that we've got to communicate here. We've got to be on the same page. So just keep that in mind throughout this week saturn is just testing you and it does test relationships saturn does test relationships as well so you may feel that test there all right just uh uh move with this energy be very communicative i always say you want to be responsive not reactive this is going to be a week you want to work with Saturn's energies. Now, you also have the nine of wands in your crown. So you see that he's got gauze on his head. He's gone through it. He's gone through it, but he's not backing down. This is someone who is, I say this card is, well, this card is all about perseverance. And it's really, really just, you know, uh, you've weathered some storms. You've gone through some moments, especially with your passions, maybe even career, right? With the ones uh, and even creativity. There could be some just uh, some blockages there, but he doesn't give up. This is a guy who doesn't give up. In fact, he's standing in front of his wands, protecting his wand, saying, come on, universe bring it to me all right come on saturn bring it to me all right i can take it is that all you've got so this is really great because it is saying that you're not going to let anyone take anything away from you that you've worked hard for especially anything that you're truly 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 passionate about uh and it does seem like you're going to be really in the zone this week too you got the empress uh which is attributed to venus as i mentioned earlier venus is your ruler so this is really great you see the symbol of venus in her stone-shaped heart this is passion this is passion galore can we say that <laughs> uh i don't even know why i said that I, yeah I, I am filming this while mercury is retrograde uh the empress passion but 
uh, super conscious love, that type of passion. This is the empress, a goddess, Aphrodite. And so this is also abundance, feeling comfortable this week in the root of every and a lot of sexual energy as well by the way okay that's coming through for me and that is you know the empress as well uh and there could be some moments in terms of especially with venus and virgo in your fifth house the fifth house is procreation she is pregnant some of y'all may be thinking about having children there could be something there with children involved uh and it may not even be you it could be someone in your family uh but there is that sense of birth of new things as well all right there's this this new reality being created it is a 312 equals new reality so there is a sense of growth and advancement here but really really feeling that abundance as it happens she does hold the golden scepter here that golden scepter creates all this abundance in her life all this passion it, it's it's really really nice this is absolutely nice uh spend time in nature okay spend time in nature uh you also got the queen of pentacles <laughs> so i love this i mean you're good you're absolutely good um there is a sense of so a big feeling of Really, really, if there is any sort of disconnect this week, it could be, again, here with that, just not seeing eye to eye. You've got to communicate. Let's communicate here. Uh, there even could be uh, feeling disconnected from somebody this week as well. So just remember just to be communicative. But there is a sense of uh, really, really feeling strongly in your power. Okay. Empress is very powerful. And so is, uh, the queen of pentacles. Very, very powerful. Now the queen of pentacles is someone who is very giving. You see your hands underneath the pentacle. All right. Unlike the king who's, who's really, he's like in his, he's owning his money. Right. So this is someone who a is the richest queen. She has resources to build the world that she wants to live in. And she's also very caring for those within her orbit because she does have the resources to make their lives great as well. Remember, you've got Mars and Jupiter and Gemini in your second house of finances, income. You're moving into like money's going to be a theme for you. Money's going to be a theme for you. Uh, and again, I love this sense of something new being created. You not giving up something new again new idea new conversation that could be struck up this week as well but there's this enthusiasm as you move this week uh one other thing i'm going to point out she's got the pomegranates all over her gown uh notice how comfortably she's uh sitting in her chair by the way she's very comfortable very comfortable you're gonna feel very comfortable this week uh especially when you hold on to that uh heart chakra and just feel that self-love as well uh but you do see the rabbit do you see the little bunny rabbit in the corner here of the queen of pentacles that is also the sense of fertility and growth as well things are growing in your life mars and jupiter conjuncting is going to be powerful you powerful for you uh taurus let's get to your stuff oh my goodness I, if you like this reading, by the way, it would be great if you like, subscribe, all that fun algorithm stuff y'all love. Uh, leave comments. Tell me what's going on. Let's commute. Let's talk. Let's talk. And you know, I love you. I am definitely affected by Mercury retrograde. Uh, saying funny, silly things. Who says that? Who says that? Let's, let's get, let's, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, yeah this is going to be this new journey that you're embarking on this week. It seems like there's, uh, you're going to feel this growth. You're going to feel this expansion. It is clear as day here and you are ready. You're ready. Um, you've got the King of Wands. Uh, so, I mean, you're, you're really, really good. There is that sense of the King of Wands, by the way, is Leo. And remember all this Leo energy in your fourth house. So there could be some big moments in home, family, domestic sector that's happening this week where you are feeling very powerful in that area. All right. You're calling the shots. If you're here for work, by the way, he is the entrepreneur as well. But this is a very transformative king who is in not only his power, but his passion as well. Speaking of what I said earlier, that restless energy, he can't sit still. He can't sit still. Look at him leaning forward in his throne. This is someone who's got 
so much passion, so much passion to do things, to continue pursuing passions, to help others with their passions. This, this is epitome of fire and very transformative. You see the Ouroboros, you know, secretly hidden in his throne, as well as the lions for passion. And then Leo, you see the salamander at his feet. I, I absolutely love this for you. Uh, I mean, honestly, you, you, this is gonna be a great week for you. Um, there you go. Seven of cups in your external factors area. So this is corresponding. The biggest energy is that two of cups that showed up in your challenge area here. So there may be someone, it may be that not seeing eye to eye or even just someone that you need to communicate with. And again, it can be a friendship where they may not understand, or they may be questioning or just may maybe really deep in this mercury retrograde where they're reassessing a lot of things in terms of their relationship with you okay that's the only thing so it's really just being open-hearted open-minded being willing to have these conversations this week it's going to be a very communicative week i mean mars and jupiter and gemini the the sign of communication really activated now all right so there that's maybe something that uh i want you to look out for there's another energy where it's almost like there could be this next step for you where it's really 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 st staying on your path staying on your path and not you know letting uh you know there's a lot of fog here smoke and mirrors here as well really just knowing what you want knowing what you want and going for it and when i say sing on your path it seems like a lot of y'all will know of uh, what's what you want now uh you do have the seven of pentacles here this is almost affirming that interestingly the seven of pentacles is a taurus card and so there is a sense of okay Everything that I'm working hard for, I'm putting blood, sweat, and tears toward that I'm investing in, I made it. And now I'm just going to see things grow. Now I'm just, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them grow on their own. All right. But some of y'all may come to a point where you may have this moment reassessing and saying, okay, I've come to this point. Is this it? Or do I want more? Do I want more? Uh, so reassess. Now, uh, or even just assess. You've got the three of ones in your final outcome. This is really great. There's that sense of movement. There's a sense of, I see what's out there. I've got this great view. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. I say this is the green light card. This is really, really, really nice because this is the three of wands. Three, as I mentioned earlier, with the Empress here, card three, uh, the sense of creation and creation for you to grow and to learn and to evolve and to even develop skills and your passions coming into form. Uh, I absolutely love this for you. It's all sky here. You know what they say, the sky is the limit. And so Boom, this is you ready to go, ready to move forward because there is a sense of moving forward. There's something new activated this week. And it really could be this, even the way that you're seeing something could shift this week. But it looks like you're really going to handle the Saturn aspect really well. Again, the biggest thing with Saturn, uh, with these squares, okay, even with what else is, uh, with with uh, Venus opposing Saturn as well. Anyway, next week, Jupiter's uh, going to be squaring Saturn. Again, that is your 11th house. Your social network groups you belong to, communities even, right? So as you can see, the two of cups, there's just someone else involved here. Um, but there is going to be this sense of just you, a lot of growth, a lot happening for you. Uh, how much time do we have? You want another, you want a clarifier? Uh, I'm gonna do the seven of cups. Oh, queen of swords. Great. You've got, uh, these two queens here. Really love that queen of swords. This is someone who just seeks fairness and everything. All right. So someone who could be. Uh, and also, you know, uh, she's a big decision maker and she does have a lot of power and authority, but she is honest with herself. Uh, no one can hide anything from her. OK, she's the queen of swords. Uh, but this is someone who is seeking true perception. But this is great with with the seven of 
of cups. So cutting through that fog, there may even be a third party involved if there is just not seeing eye to eye with someone. And again, it can have to do with anything with your 11th house, uh, with the fact that we do have that full moon in Aquarius coming up, uh, with all these placements and aspects falling uh, over the full moon in Aquarius, which is happening on Monday. So you're, you may feel the effects of the full moon a few days before that is your 10th house of career. So there could be something here with career as well. It could be not seeing eye to eye with a boss or a colleague, or there may be something here, but just go with what your heart desires, what you feel deep down in your bones. There's some new things happening for you. You're coming into this abundance, but there may be someone here who is kind of like, you know, the middleman with the Queen of Swords. Uh, but it also could be someone who you have a conversation with and it brings that clarity that you need. All right. So with that said, thanks so much, uh, uh, Taurus. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what's going on. Tell me what's going on. I'm excited for y'all uh, for this expansion and this growth and, and you going to do a lot of self-discovery. And that's that's really, really, this is, this is great. Now, uh, next week, yes, we will talk more about the full moon in Aquarius and Jupiter squaring Saturn, which again, you still, you may feel over this weekend with, with all these other aspects. Anyway, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.